Pre-order the Clownfish TV comic book right now on Indiegogo. Go to clownfishtvcomic.com. That's clownfishtvcomic.com. This is a fun collection of all new comic strips based on dumb stuff we've said on the show. Again, that's clownfishtvcomic.com. You're going to have to hurry. We're only taking pre-orders for a limited time. Now we're going to get back into the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but she will be here in spirit. Uh, we're going to use one of her articles from piratesandprincesses.net. We're going to talk about the projected box office haul for Guardians of the Galaxy 3 this weekend. It looks like it's being adjusted downward. Originally, they were saying 130 to 155 million, then it was adjusted down to 130 million, and then it was adjusted down to 120 million, and now some outlets are actually saying it might go as low as 110 million domestic. Uh, part of the reason for this is the leaks, I think. The, uh, the leaks about Rocket's story in the movie, and uh, you know there are gonna be some spoilers in this video, Based on what I've read, I obviously have not seen the movie yet, but based on what I've read, this is going to turn a lot of people off. Um, it's 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 pretty sad, and it's potentially going to turn a lot of people off to this movie. And once the word of mouth gets out that you know it is a kind of a depressing movie, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, again, Guardians of the Galaxy historically has been known uh, to be a lighthearted. Uh, movie franchise. I mean, there are some weighty themes in it. Um, we have had deaths in the previous two movies, but as I understand it, uh, for whatever reason, Rocket's story hits closer to home for a lot of people. It just uh, seems very cruel to a lot of people. That's what I've heard. And I'll talk a little bit about it. So if, if you don't want to be spoiled, you probably want to shut the video off. If you don't want to hear me talk, you probably want to shut the video off. Uh, but no, I'm going to talk a little bit more about what I've read later in the video. Before we get any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Go out to clownfishtv.com for more objective pop culture news. Go out to piratesandprincesses.net, which is where this article is, and this was actually done a couple of days ago before a lot of the mainstream media outlets caught on that the movie is starting to drop, uh, at least the projections for this weekend. Now, look, I, I, don't, I don't know if the movie's any good. I haven't seen it. I did like the first two Guardians movies. Overall, I do like James Gunn movies. You know, I, that being said, I'm not sure about Superman, but, you know, whatever. Guardians is his thing, and I'm sure the movie will be functional. I'm sure it'll be okay. But that doesn't tell us how it's going to resonate with audiences, and a lot of audiences have no doubt of the MCU at this point. A lot of audiences might want a, a lighter summer movie than what this one's offering. Uh, I don't know. But according to the people at piratesandprincesses.net, Cambria Pratt, a.k.a. Geeky Sparkles, it seems that the box office predictions for Guardians 3 are starting to get posted and they're dropping. Deadline reported initial numbers at about 130, and that's true, they did. Um, it's tracking to 130 million U.S. opening as of April 13th. Uh, then the direct put it in the 120 to 155 million range. That is also true. Um... They're saying it's going to do at least 120, possibly, possibly 155 million. And uh, now they're talking 110 million domestically. Now they're adjusting it down again to $110 million. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a math whiz, said Geeky, but last time I checked, 110 is less than 130. It's a lot less than 155. Well, numbers can change. We see it all the time. The film is opening in just a couple of days and the numbers seem to be dropping. This kind of happened with D&D too. And then they're going to spin it as a win. And that's what they're talking about. They're like, oh, it's going to be the number one movie and it's going to knock Mario out of the top spot. But there's no way in hell this movie is going to make anywhere close to what Mario made its opening weekend. Uh, here's a recent article. Well, I think this is what she was quoting. Uh, Variety. It's going to end Super Mario's four-week box office reign with $120 million possible. But then you get into the article, and they're saying there's a chance that Volume 3 could fall short of those projections and land closer to $110 to $118 million, according to independent tracking services. Again, you never know. Um, you can project the box office opening, but it could go either way. 
you know, it really could. Mario opened way bigger than anybody projected, and Guardians could open way bigger than anybody's projecting. I want to be clear. These are projections. These are not my numbers. I did not pull these numbers out of my ass. Um, th this is what they're saying. They said it could go as low as 110, but whatever whatever's going on, it does seem like interest in this movie is not nearly as high as it was for the second Guardians of the Galaxy movie and certainly a lot of other MCU movies. And this is the biggest Marvel movie Disney has this year. Ant-Man 3 was a failure. I think the Marvels is going to be a failure. And this is what they're betting on. And it, it looks like it's not going to open as big as they were probably hoping for, despite being the last Guardians movie. Um, but uh, here's where people are probably getting tripped up. Now, the critical score... Um, is not fantastic. It's not bad. In fact, it's actually going up. It's 80%, but it still is the lowest rated of uh, all the Guardians movies, right? Um, you know, but I mean, look, mo most <laughs> most movie franchises would go for 80%. It was like 78 before, but compared to the 92% of the original, yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. So here's where a lot of people are going to get tripped up. And this is spoiler territory. This is what I have heard happens I have not seen the movie for myself, so, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but it does seem to be that this is the case, right? Uh, my understanding is that they spend a lot of time delving into Rocket's origin story. He was a uh, scientific experiment, the hands of the high evolutionary, and he had some animal friends loosely based on his posse from the comic books, the more, the more recent comic books. And there's a lot of talk about how they're all going to live this happy life together and they're all going to, you know, do this, do that. And it is cut short. They die tragically and the movie's sad and there are a lot of fake out deaths. And yeah, so that's that's my understanding of what happens. Again, I gave you multiple spoiler warnings um, and that is a very uh, a short version of the leaks. But yeah, basically... James Gunn gets you to fall in love with these animal characters and then kills them and he kills them off. So you feel real, real bad. And it's very, very sad and very, very tragic. Um, so this is uh, this is coming from the rap. Will audiences fall in love with Marvel's uh, the Marvel team swan song or will the film's shocking flashbacks be too much for many to bear? According to The Wrap, MCU films aren't just expected to be blockbuster hits. They're expected to be the biggest hits of the year after Ant-Man and the Wasp flopped with less than 500 million worldwide, there's a question as to whether or not the critical and commercial struggles of the film will continue to sap Marvel of its pull on audiences and keep future titles from reaching the 750 million plus benchmark. Yeah, that's going to happen too. So it's like a one-two punch, right? It's like people are already soured on the MCU. I'm sorry, there's no way to put a positive spin on it. Phase 4 has been a failure. Phase 5 looks like it's going to be a massive failure. And now even Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which was the biggest thing they were supposed to have going for them this year, looks like it's going to not do as well as it could have done. Let's, let's put it that way. I mean, it could defy expectations. It could wind up being a $300 million opening weekend. Who the hell knows? But it looks very, very, uh, very unlikely at this point. Um, but they said, yeah, they think that Rocket's storyline is definitely going to have an impact on that. They think that the word of mouth could potentially kill Buzz for this movie. It could uh, certainly put a dent into the family audience because it is pretty dark. And of course, we've got Star-Lord dropping an F-bomb. Um, that being said, it doesn't mean it's a bad movie. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad movie. I'm just saying that commercially, commercially, it may not do as well as Disney needs it to do. So this is going to be a very interesting year for them. And it's going to be really interesting to see how Bob Iger tries to put a positive spin if all of their movies, because so far it looks like pretty much everything they have coming out is set to underperform. Between this and The Little Mermaid, definitely The Marvels, I think, is going to be a failure. How is he going to put a positive spin on that with the shareholders? Because he's under a lot of scrutiny right now. And... Uh, We'll see what happens. It's going to be really interesting. I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Help support the channel. Go to thereef.support and get early access to podcasts, videos, and other content. That's thereef.support.